Welcome to another episode of Perspective. Today we're talking to Ashley Baxter over at With Jack. We're talking insurance. But don't leave yet. It's not all boring. It's interesting stuff. It is. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will. Welcome to Perspective, a podcast for wedding creators, where we sit down often with a special guest and talk about our many years of experience in the wedding industry so you can learn from us and grow your wedding business. This episode is, of course, sponsored by With Jack. Funny, because we have Ashley Baxter from With Jack with us today. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. Shall I pour the drinks? Yeah. Oh, yes, and please. A, and a nod to the previous episodes where you've been on where we used to always do what we're drinking. I know yeah. some people are missing it. If that's you, welcome. That was like um, for maybe for five years ago. Uh, yeah, it could be. Did you pour Because it was Greg like episode any? four or five. I pre-poured mine. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Simon. Greg is a selfish arsehole. I poured one. No, <laughs> so. I poured it and then thought, let's do coffee with. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, so this is a little bit of a different episode because for our YouTube viewers, you might notice I don't have a laptop in front of me. I have no notes. This is going to be an off the cuff. <laughs> Greg's going to be very nervous that this is off the cuff, but it's going to be an off the cuff episode. First we are up, freestyling we're freestyling about insurance. That's right. That's right. <laughs> First up, well, hang who, on. Who I, is actually back? Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. I actually forgot to introduce ourselves because I did oh. the intro wrong. I, oh. And who are we? Well, I'm Simon and this is Greg. Together we are Cinemate Films. We are Scottish-based wedding filmmakers and we want to educate you on how to run a business. And who are we talking to? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Uh, Great start. Great I'm start. Ashley. Um, I am building with Jack and we help to keep creatives in business by supporting them financially and or legally if they have problems with a client or make a mistake in their work. And then other than that, I like video games and picking up heavy things in the gym and photography as well, believe it or not. Yes, indeed. I haven't seen you with the camera for a while. I know. I really need to get back out there. Um, I have started to do my photo project again where I oh, choose yeah? a random word every week. And then... Mm. Um, I really struggled. I spent hours last night trying to edit this photo and it's just not coming together for me. So I am working away at it in the background, but I've not really had much to Is this the first share. one in the series? Because I've not seen any being posted yet. Where, so the, the last one, the word was high. Then I went away to Oban and I was like, I'll go to the highest viewpoint in Oban and get like a nice scenic photo. But whenever you go to these high viewpoints, they always have like twigs that are in the way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you've got a great view, but there are twigs in the way of your photo. So I didn't end up posting that one, but I did Damn post nature. a photo from Oban. Mm. I know, getting in the way of my photo project. And then this one was Bond. And then I tried to do some weird composition photo with me and Indy, and it's just not... It's not happening. Um, so mm. I might try try that again or just start with a new word, but that feels like cheating. Mm. And for people who don't know who Indy is? She's my dead dog. That's right. <laughs> oh, Indy. <laughs> You're missed. Yeah. She's, she's uh, like, I thought Bond because her, her and I obviously had a good relationship. Mm. Well, I say that, but then a dog has no choice. You've basically captured them and then held them captive for years, she, she 16 lost, and a half years. <laughs> she had lots of opportunities to go away if she wanted to. She but could have ran out that door in the last office. She couldn't though because, oh yeah, that's true actually. So yeah, well, that's a good point. So hmm. um, yeah, so we'll, we'll have a second crack at it. Maybe not tonight because the Scotland game is on, but it's some other evening. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so for those of you who don't know, Ashley shares an office in Tutenko, which is our co-working um, business and we're here in Glasgow and that's where you I mean uh, you're very rarely away from your laptop to be fair but you, you do come in here and work alongside us yeah I'm I'm here I was I was gonna say I'm like here from eight o'clock in the morning which is super early but you're always here as well at that time <laughs> I'm always here because I've gotten into the good habit of going to the gym like you We've just, we have discovered, well, we discovered a while ago, um, that fitness is the way to go and it's fun. Oh, yeah. And, I um, think so. Yeah. 
We just need to convince Greg of it and get him to join the same gym as us and then we'll all be working together and working out together. Mm. I may start running. You might start it's getting, running. It's getting warmer again. I may start running again. All right. I mean, I'm a fair weather runner. What does that mean? He's when got it gets no frosty grit. and wintry, I'm not running. No, you shouldn't. It's dangerous. If you slip and you break an elbow, then you can't do your job. <sighs> an elbow, hey? Oh, yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I did once take up, what was it, rollerblading? Fell once. Thought, no, nope. I'm, I'm self-employed. I can't, I can't be doing this. I think I briefly remember that phase. Um, but actually, to bring insurance into the subject, I mean, there is insurance for, it's not something that I do, but there is insurance if you as a self-employed person injure yourself and you can't work hmm. and you're signed off from work, then you can get, some kind of income protection insurance thing. That was a really good segue, yeah. right? I, I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So <laughs> what is with Jack? We know who Ashley is now, but what's with Jack? So with Jack is um, what we're really just trying to build as a platform that's going to help to keep freel- creatives, mostly freelancers in business. Um, and Right now, it's mostly insurance. So we have several different insurance products. The sort of main product we sell is one that helps you if somebody ever tries to take legal action against you or recover damages from you. But our other products um, that we sell as well are often used more often than that one. That that doesn't happen very often. It does happen, it can happen, but it doesn't happen very often. The ones that we see photographers and videographers using a lot is of course contents insurance. Mm. Um, it's our most used product. And I was actually looking through our claims data for contents insurance and like 70% of our claims are from <laughs> photographers <laughs> and videographers. Clumsy photographers. <laughs> Filmmakers, sorry. Um, but also I just think, you know, there are other little bits and pieces that you can add onto your policy too that kind of give you access to legal advice without having to go and find your own lawyer and pay for expensive upfront fees. And I think that, you know, at some point when you are working with clients, you're going to run into a situation, maybe nothing too dramatic, but still something where you want to kind of talk to a professional and get a bit of advice. And that's why I think insurance is really good because it's fairly priced, Mm. unlike having to kind of, like I said, go out and find a lawyer and pay expensive upfront fees just for one conversation conversation with them mm-hmm. so that's what we're doing it with jack yeah um i i, I kind of want to take this right back all right i'm uh, for many years i didn't really understand insurance some might say i still don't so for our listeners can you run us down the basics of the basics mm. of insurance like What's a broker? What's an underwriter? Who? What's their relationship? How do you get your money? What's the you know? What's the process of all these things? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think I don't think it matters too much. I think like most people do, just lump them all into the same category, and that's absolutely fine. I don't think you need to worry too much about how it all works behind the scenes. But you get brokers like myself, some of which will kind of shop around a wide range of the market to find the best fit for you. Um, but because we're already quite niche and we only work with quite a specific. Um, subset of people we just work with one provider because we tend to find that that policy is a really good fit for creatives so we're the broker we arrange your insurance and we're going to be your point of contact for everything doesn't matter what your problem is if it's a claim if it's a change you want to make to your policy if it's a question you have go to your broker you might be sitting there thinking well I don't really trust putting like placing my insurance with you know a um a girl wearing a bright orange hat and an (laughs) ugly jacket. Um, But we don't pay out the claim. That's what the insurer does. And the underwriters, they're the ones that just determine what risks they're comfortable with underwriting. Mm -hmm. Um, And the insurer pays out the claim. So the broker's got quite an important role because I find that most of the time when we're dealing with customers, um, they really just want to kind of run things by somebody. They just want to have a chat. I've got this little bit of a problem. I don't know what to do. Mm. Or I'm worried about this particular thing happening. And I don't really think that you get to have those human conversations with an insurer, whereas your broker's more like a, not a mentor, but just somebody that you can kind of offload to and and have a chat with. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, totally. 
I think um, I think people out there have this bad expectation, not expectation, well, maybe expectation, but certainly they don't view their broker or their insurance company with that type of, I would come to you with a problem if, I'm not saying this right. I feel like they're not trusted enough to, you know, feel like people can come to the insurance company and be like, hey, so I've got this problem. It just seems like you're just going to get a whole a lot higher of legal... higher premium the following year. Well, yeah, that too. You have to pay more every time you pick up pick up the phone. But like, it doesn't like... And that that's why I always like pushing you onto people because you just pointed out that you are a normal creative individual like us you are just this is you and i th- i think that's quite comforting for many creative individuals out there who you know might get a little bit off put by yeah, there's a bit of a misconception know. around insurance where people think oh i'm just spending money for nothing and mm. i don't see the benefit of it or whatever but as you just said you're there so that they can ask you oh you know is this something that my insurance would help with? And yeah. that's what the broker's yeah. there for, is to help be like, yeah, absolutely. Let's let's get the conversation going. Mm. I mean, I wish I had that. Like, I remember when I was a freelance photographer and I remember that feeling so vividly of buying my first insurance policy because I wasn't in business insurance at that time. And like yourself, I, I didn't understand it all. Mm. And I just kind of put together this package and had this overwhelming feeling of, I have no idea if what I've bought is right, but I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope that I never have to find out. Yeah. And I want the opposite for my customers, or not just my customers, just any kind of creative, like anybody providing a professional service to a client. You want them to just feel more confident going into every shoot, working on every project, um, and not having all of these niggling little worries at the back of their mind. Um, and I think like that's the role that insurance plays so well. Statistically speaking, you're never going to use your insurance. Statistically speaking, only five- You don't five, want to use it either. You don't want usually. to use it. And also like from look again, looking at our claims data, 5% of our customers make a professional indemnity claim. It's a tiny amount, but I still think that it can, um, it can help you so much going into um, projects or working on jobs with clients or having difficult conversations with clients it just really should arm you with the confidence to be able to stand up for yourself when you get a client that's maybe treating you a little bit badly or when they come to you with a when you've got to have that difficult conversation it should give you the confidence to be able to have that difficult conversation knowing that if the absolute worst was to ever happen mm-hmm. you've got a team of people to help you you're not going to go through things alone mm-hmm. and that's that's the scariest thing yeah. as a creative, as a freelancer, you often are on your own. And so I want to kind of make people think of insurance as like, I've got a team of people behind me that really want to help me and see me succeed. Cause that's what it is at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, It's almost like having your first employee to some extent, like yeah. your team, your team and insurance are there. Yeah. Well, I remember like when I was exploring like positioning and stuff, which I find a really interesting subject matter. And like one of the things I was thinking about, is there any way that we can position with Jack as like your digital kind of co-founder? Because that is what it's kind of like. We just don't want you to carry the burden off you know, running a business alone, basically. Mm. Just focus on the stuff that you're good at. Yeah. The creative stuff. And, and, you know, let us worry about the rest. Mm -hmm. I'd agree. I mean, we've had so many people on this podcast talk about horror stories, um, where whether it's their car's been broken into or their lens has fallen into a river or, I mean, there's a whole bunch of situations where you might be inclined to pick up the phone to your broker and be like, hey, so this happened, can you help me? Can you run us through some of the products or whatever you call them for the, for the layman's out there or for me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, what they're called, what they can help with, what you think people should have, what you think maybe are products that are oversold that maybe don't aren't like aren't required for a wedding photographer, a wedding filmmaker? Yeah. All right. So let's start with the main one. 
I would not run a business without this. Can you guess what it is? Public liability? No! Ah. Contents cover. No! Ah. Um, like professional indemnity insurance. Ah. Because if something goes wrong, you make a mistake in your work or a client isn't happy with the work that you've done. I just feel like as photographers and filmmakers, sometimes the... You don't, you don't have to do that. I know. I can, can I just call you videographers? You no. can call yes. us anything. But it's a harder word to say. <laughs> so I don't You're say. right. Um, the, you might think, right, okay, there's not that much risk attached to what I'm doing. Like I've only, I've only charged 2000 pounds to shoot this wedding. It's not about that. It's about the amount of money that they've spent on the wedding that mm. um, if they think that you've done something to ruin that or cause any kind of emotional distress and they kind of try to, to you know, say, right, we spent 20 grand on this wedding. You haven't captured it the way that we wanted it to. There's just so much more at stake. That's something that we see um, quite a lot of, like professional indemnity claims are typically quite large and um, not many people have the money lying around to sort those types of situations out. So yeah. I would have that. That's like for me, the most important product to have. If you're working with clients, professional indemnity insurance, and it's cheap as well. Like it's going to cost you about 10 to 20 pounds a month. Um, the, the other ones would be of course, a content insurance, but I don't think require too much of an explanation about what they are. Like I said, this is our most used product, <laughs> especially with photographers and filmmakers um, because you're just carrying, you're out on shoots all the time and there's there's so much more risk associated with equipment when you're taking it out and about. There's mm. not just the risk of dropping it and causing accidental, accidental damage or knocking it off something. You've got an increased risk of theft as well, which we see a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's important. Think about like if everything, if everything that you take out and about with you or everything that you kind of keep on your premises overnight was to somehow get lost, damaged or stolen, do you have the capital to go out and replace all of that? Probably not. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Probably not. Yeah. No. So I think contents insurance is really good to have. And out of all of the insurance products, that's the one that you're probably going to have to use at some point. Mm. Um, then public liability you mentioned. So that's really popular with photographers and filmmakers. But to be completely transparent with you, with Jack's been going for six years I think we've never had a public liability claim yeah mm. it's it's not that common um but with that said it's still a really cheap insurance product it's like yeah. a couple of pounds a month so I still wouldn't run the type of business that you run without it mm -hmm. um but we've never had a claim for it that, that's like, the one where if you've got your bag sitting in the ground and somebody trips over it yeah any kind of that? accident or yeah. injury and they say to you like that was your fault because I think mm. the reason most people would add that to their policies because venues quite often, not often, but yeah, on the rare occasion, it. a venue might say, can we see your public liability? Yeah. Maybe more so with drone, but yeah. sometimes with just photography as well, they'll ask mm -hmm. for that. And that's yeah. probably because it also includes cover for third party property damage. So if you mm. cause damage to third party property, it's, it's nice for venues to know that they can easily recover the money yeah. off you. Um, and then lastly, a wee product as well that we have is legal expenses insurance. And um, that's kind of good. I talked about professional indemnity and it's kind of like, th that's, that's it's 5% of our customers make a, a professional indemnity claim. So it's not often used, but there are loads of situations where you might have a problem with a client, a contract dispute, a payment dispute, questions about copyright, ownership mm. and all sorts legal expenses insurance is good for that because you get access to a wee helpline you can just pick up the phone and talk to somebody that's specialized in that area right. mm -hmm. um for free as often as possible and then it also includes um some other cover that may not be relevant for your line of work because you accept payment up front but it includes like a late payment chasing service and things like that yeah. uh, so yeah. it's just nice to have see if you like had all of those things obviously depending on how much equipment you have you might you might just be paying about thirty pounds a month for all those things, which isn't mm. a lot of money if you think about what you get in exchange for that. Yeah. I don't think it is. If anyway. you accidentally smash a vase at a fancy venue, that oh covers you goodness. for thirty quid. Yeah. yeah, just please don't. <laughs> please don't do that. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, have we ever done anything, anything like that before? No. I, I'm trying to think. I, I don't think we've ever. 
Or maybe smash the lens on a shoot. Can you hear my butt vibrating? Yes. I know that you pointed it out. I knew this would happen. What's gonna, are you going to clank call? I don't know if it's a customer. Um, would you want to go answer that and Greg and I will talk about Thrive and our experiences? It's too late. We can call that. Oh, <laughs> oh. Um, They're probably going to watch this back and go, mother f- <laughs> <laughs> I feel like people only ever phone me when I'm recording a podcast. Have you noticed that? It, you do get a lot of calls when, when it's we're inconvenient. <laughs> Either, yeah, when you're... Simon. What was that? Oh, that would be I velcroed I didn't I stuck Are they the, not even on? I know I don't I don't like them on. I prefer oh. the TV to be in a black hole. Oh. Anyway, feel free to talk about <laughs> Thrive because people like we've maxed out the insurance chat. It's like ten well, minutes and then Well we're hang on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. There so could you can you like retail retail? Can you tell us some horror stories or situations that you've come across? Is that are you allowed to do that? Yeah, there's customers that have given me consent to talk about their okay. particular experiences. There's one that I've talked to you about before that you'll that I've spoke to you about fairly recently, which was it was a really interesting story, a horrible story, but an interesting one because it utilised two different insurance products. So the first thing was that they went to a shoot and um, the their hard drive, which had all of the video files on it suffered accidental damage and therefore the video files became corrupt. So they claimed on their contents insurance because your contents insurance, if you arrange it through with Jack, has a really cool feature that includes data recovery costs so the insurer will pay for a data recovery company to try to recover the files. Mm. Um, And did they? No, it wasn't successful. So firstly, that was like a 4,000 or 5,000 pound claim from content, from a contents insurance perspective to try to recover mm-hmm. these files. So now we had another part of the claim, which was professional indemnity insurance because my customer had to go back to their client and say, this has happened and yeah. I have no, like no files, no footage from our yeah. shoot. And this is what I always say to my customers is that um, you can, you can do everything right, um, but you can't control how your client reacts. Some people are going to be fairly reasonable about things and some mm. people aren't, and you have no control over that. Yeah. Yeah. So in their case, the client said to them, well, we've just spent a fortune on hiding models. They'd like hired a location for two days or whatever it was. They'd spent a lot of money on the shoot um, and now they had nothing to show for it. And so they said to the the videographer, like we expect you to cover the cost of that. And that was like another four grand. So that one situation, which was just really unfortunate, let's be honest, like your hard drive just taking a knock when you're on a shoot and suddenly losing the files, um, cost about nine grand and they used two different insurance products for that situation. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones as well that are specifically related. Like honestly, like every week I'm getting claims through from photographers and filmmakers just like your bog standard like I'm out in a shoot and I've dropped my camera or like somebody's picked up my camera bag when I'm shooting yeah. and oh God, yeah. walked away with 10 grand worth of equipment mm-hmm. um, so like if you're listening to this right now and you don't have contents insurance at the very least get that sorted mm. um, because it just it's crazy how how recurring these like problems I mean I've I like when I was a Photographer, I claimed my contents insurance twice. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I was only a photographer for how many years? I didn't do it for that long. Yeah, don't ask us. <laughs> don't ask us. Five years, I, I think. So five years okay. and two claims. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's 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 a pretty horrible story there, and um, and you can see how that would could apply to so many different scenarios. It's not just like commercial shoots that you go yeah. out on. Mm, it, it could be sure. weddings. If you that put would that be the into a wedding worst. situation. There's not only the cost of it. There's like the emotional stress that people will yeah. get. People could get really emotional with those emails and conversations. That oh yeah, man, it could get nasty. It can't. Yeah. It makes me feel sick to think about that. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Well, here's a question for you that's insurance related, kind yeah. of. Cool. What What keeps you awake at night with your business? Um, what keeps me awake at what in terms of insurance or just well, like no, anything? This is, I find that's a really good question to ask from an insurance perspective because people don't think about insurance 
like we think about insurance differently, right? You think mm. about it as like from a, I think about it as a broker and you think about it as a creative. Yep. And yeah. so the way that I find it really, um, I find it really interesting to ask people that question because then when they give you a list of their worries, you can say, well, here's that product that can help in that way. Do you know what I mean? So um, that's why I ask, like, fair enough, if nothing keeps you awake at night, then that's fantastic. I mean, the the idea of a client coming back to me and saying uh, your your work was terrible, yeah. always is at the back of my mind because we've all got, like, imposter syndrome and, and all that kind of stuff. Never happened. Apart from in the early years, like, I think there was one moment that we missed in a, a wedding that was just unforeseen live event, like couldn't have foreseen this happening. So it wasn't captured. Um, but it, that got heated. Mm. Um, I, but I don't tend to worry too much about the business stuff because I know... Yeah. Greg will sort out. Greg will out. No, but like, we, I mean, we're, we're always covered we're, for yeah. the most part. Yeah, you know? it sounds cheesy, but we have insurance with Jack. Yeah. So that sort of stuff of oh, what if someone's right now breaking into our office and stealing our equipment doesn't keep me up at night? It's more so just stuff like, are we serving our clients well just now? Mm. Are we looking after them? What's the next step to grow the business? Things like that that are on the mind. But yeah, yeah I don't think there's any worries about Ooh, Simon's I've got I've problems. Just, I've just struck one, right? So so when I'm working in my house, right? Yeah. Um, I have a one-year-old puppy and she is constantly chewing at my shit. Honestly, like if in so, there's been the odd occasion I've turned around and she's had her mouth around my power cable. No way. So it's it, that that that's been uh, difficult. But I always uh, um, imagine she's found a hard drive on a table or she's jumped up and she's just gnawing it when I you know when I've gone to make a coffee. Accidental damage. Accidental Contents damage. Contents and sorted. Yeah, and but again, again, not much of a fear because we have a good, really good backup system. So although I'm working from the hard drive, Greg's, oh, yeah, Greg's yeah. caught I, I quite often backups. find Dexter walking around with an SSD drive at his ear <laughs> as if it's a phone. <laughs> That's going, funny. Hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> oh, dear. And I'm like, it's not a phone. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> and to go back to the one where a client comes to you and says they're not happy with the work that you've done, theoretically, um, just to talk about that, so refunds are not covered under your insurance, but what insurance can do for you in a situation like that is say to a client that you feel like you have done a good job, you know, you've fulfilled the brief, you've met the terms, you know, and all that stuff, um, and just kind of stand your ground because mm. you'll find that um, this, that happened to me before when a client wasn't happy with my photos and my gut reaction because it's sickening when that happens because we care about our work as creatives yeah. my gut reaction was to go oh, here's your money back like you know and 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 then i thought but i've done i've done a really good job like they should yeah. be happy mm -hmm. with this and so mm -hmm. because i knew how insurance worked by that point it gave me the confidence to say to them i'm really sorry that you're you're not pleased with the photos but um I've, I've done a very good job here and I've, you know, met the terms of the contract and I've done everything that you've asked me to do. And so I don't really see where else we can go from here. And, and what I was doing there was basically backing them into a corner to make a decision because they've only got two decisions to make, right? One, which is, right, okay, fair enough. We'll just, we'll just leave things as is. Or the second one is to take things further with a threat of you know, legal action or, mm. or trying to recover money from me. Um, and that's why I have insurance. So um, so whilst refunds are not covered, I do think insurance in that situation gives you the confidence to kind of go into that conversation and handle it a little bit differently. Yeah. It kind of gives you a bit of power, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, well, uh, are there any like no-nos? Like when, say your clients come back, she's not happy. Are there any things that you should not do or that you should not say in an email or a phone call or anything like that? Yeah, like, I mean, look, every situation is different, but insurers generally don't want you admitting liability. So I know that can sometimes be difficult because you sometimes are at fault for things happening. Um, but it's best to just try to not be like, oh, oh, don't invite a claim against you. Don't be like, oh, I'm so sorry that I've made a mistake here, but don't worry. Right. I have insurance. 
you know, we'll get the money off the insurer. That's not how insurance works. It's mm-hmm. there to defend you if a claim is made against you. It's not. Yeah. It will not help you if you've if you've invited a claim against you. So I've had a few customers that have got in touch to be like, you know, I've made a mistake and I've told my client that I've got insurance, and I'm like, that's that's not how this <laughs> yeah. works. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely don't invite any claims against you, and also try not to admit liability. Like it's okay to appease a client and you know apologize for for the situation but don't don't admit any wrongdoings if possible mm. in that situation you might not know a definitive answer on this but in that situation client's not happy with the work they've emailed to say this is unacceptable you've not fulfilled your brief if you're if the photographer's insurer went back could it not be on the couple to use their insurance to pay out and cover them what, like wedding that, insurance? Wedding insurance. If they've got what? wedding insurance, would that would they I have no be idea. able to claim on that? I don't, don't know. know. I don't know anything about wedding yeah. insurance, to be honest. Um, so I'm not sure. But what I, I bet like most couples don't even have wedding insurance. Oh, maybe like now they do, because I feel like COVID really highlighted think, yeah. that yeah. so much stuff can happen outside of your control. So maybe it has become a big hit. Maybe I should move into that. Hmm. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just so you know, Ashley, when you're when you're wanting to do a death stare into a camera, I uh, you know. I look at that one. It's actually that one. <laughs> Maybe I should look into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah perfect, perfect. I actually don't want anybody to watch this video though because I, I'm just out the gym. Yeah, um, people are watching it. People are right thinking, now. Is it live? No, no. it's not live. <laughs> Watching on YouTube. So, they've subscribed. They've hit the bell. <laughs> yeah. So um, for those of our listeners who cannot see you, you are in your gym gear yeah you have chalk on your hands oh yeah um because ashley is in fact a strong woman competitor yeah yeah (laughs) in fact you just you had a competition did you know yeah and i came third have you felt my muscles i've never felt your muscles (laughs) oh but we'll do that later (laughs) (laughs) yeah i came third so I went into the last event. I know I've been telling everybody this, but it's quite cool. I went into the last event of the day. I should talk to you. Mm. Uh, first, like I had the opportunity to win this competition and I just had to have a, a reasonable run at the last event. And then I was the first person to fail the Atlas stones. But mm. they're just so scary, man. There's nothing. I don't think there's anything scarier than like being trampled When you say by you were first person to fail, were you first to attempt it? No, I was the last to attempt it. I was about it. to say, usually the, whoever's in the lead goes last. Yeah, I went last. Yeah. And mm. then I got the first stone over and I was like, well, that did not feel good. And then I got in my head and then the next mm. one, I just couldn't get it over. Um, but I'm still really pleased because I have a wee bronze medal. Yeah. Have Hell you seen yeah. my medal? I haven't seen your medal. Oh, I'll, I'll wear it, it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, please, <laughs> please do. Please do. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, indeed. And that's why you want Ashley on your team because she'll kick your component source. <laughs> component? I did say component, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I did say component, didn't I? Component. What's the word I'm trying to say? Competitor. Client? No, competitive. I don't know. Like, don't I'm know. not a violent person, though. Let's She'll not. fight for you. You just want her on your side. Yeah, basically. you just want me on your side, but there's no violence. Yeah, You know so, I have a podcast. It's ridiculous. Can't even talk. Why? <laughs> we do the usual wrap-up questions. We ask if you've got a book recommendation. Oh, no. We didn't prep you on that. Well, You're always reading books. Well, I know, but also, like, um, I do also listen to your podcast, and so I know the questions you ask, but for some reason, whenever I'm put on the spot, I forget like everything that I've ever consumed. Um, I just, oh no, cause somebody else recommended that on your podcast. It doesn't matter. It's all right. People need to hear it again and again before they actually go, you know no. what, I'm going to buy that. Do you know what? Um, my favorite book that I tell everybody about, is it annoying that I do that? Yeah. I mean, we'll I see when I go to edit. <laughs> Uh, my favourite book that I tell everybody about is The Dip. Yes. Have I told ah, you dip. about I've told you about that before. Seth Godin. Yeah. Seth Godin. I like all Seth Godin books. Mm. I like that one though because They're quite easy to consume as well. You could read yeah. that on a flight. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're bath time books. <laughs> or flight time books. Or, or flight time books, yes. But I, I don't I, I don't travel a lot. Yeah, well, me either anymore. So bath time books. And I liked that one just because um, it was just really relevant to where I was at that point in my life where I was like deciding 
I was like, work, as creatives, you work on projects and they're all really exciting and fun and shiny to begin with. And then you just reach a sticking point and it gets really hard. Mm. And uh, most people quit at that point, which isn't always a bad thing. But if you lean into the dip, then amazing things await you on the other side, apparently. Yes. And that's uh, certainly been the case for me. So I like the dip. What was the other question? There wasn't one. Hit me with it. Just, just book recommendations and TV show recommendations. I mean, yeah, you said you're a gamer. TV shows. You said you're a gamer. What are you playing? You know what I'm. You know what um. I played, Simon. <laughs> I got obsessed with <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Is that is it called Odyssey? Yeah, yeah it's called Odyssey. Um, for me, like Cassandra. It's just amazing, mm. right? Yeah, it's, yes, it's, I mean, it's out. a very good day. I'm just you are missing out. Glazed eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Love fine. Cassandra. She's like, it's not often you play a video game and you get like a female protagonist that's hench. Mm. She is built. She's got so much muscle on her. I love her. She's amazing. So I loved Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Um, TV shows. Um, oh, do you know what I'm watching right now? Tulsa King. Tulsa? That's... Stallone, isn't it? Yes. Is it any good? I like it. I love a bit of Sylvester. I mean, who doesn't? Where, where's right. that one? But, uh, Paramount. Paramount. Mm. Paramount. I really like it. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. It's good. I yeah. haven't heard anybody talk about it. And when I've, and I've not heard anybody on your podcast talk about it. I've not heard anybody in this office talk about it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I really, really like it. And I like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's cool. Check it out. The last thing I watched was Sly. Is was that what people call him? <laughs> Sly! He does get called that, but I don't think people call that. him very often. I remember, I, I, I don't know if you have Netflix, but uh, The Ultimate Beastmaster was his creation, I believe. It's like... Is that like reality? No, The Ultimate Beast... The Ultimate Beastmaster! That's one hell of a reality name. <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of these competition shows where um, competitors from... I mean, from the States uh, and around the world, compete on this. Um, yeah, so it's reality TV. Reality? It's not reality it's TV. But it's real people. Is it real people <laughs> doing a competition or is it fictional? Yeah, yeah it's real people. Right. Yeah, it's real. That is reality TV. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. It sounds it's like reality physical TV. 100. <sighs> Okay. Well, anyway, it's this competition where people go through the the course and they compete. Yeah. I love stuff like that because remember I got obsessed with physical 100. I do yeah. remember that. I love stuff like that, like mm. where you see people physically and mentally being pushed to their absolute limits. I'll watch it. I've not watched it. Is he in it? Uh, he is. He like, I think it was his baby. Uh, so he created it. I don't know if he sold it or whatever, but he's in the first season as he introduces it. Uh, does some of the voice work for it, but Ooh. yeah, it's right, interesting. I'll give, give that a watch then. Give it a go. There's also a, a British version of it as well. Because it doesn't have my, Sylvester. It doesn't have no, Sly. No, it doesn't. It doesn't have Sly. <laughs> but my kids love it. Kids, kids love a competition. Yeah. Based yeah. TV reality TV show. Yeah, if it's like if it's anything like Ninja Warrior. Oh yeah. Then uh, I can see it's, why it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just fun. Yeah. And then when you watch it and you're like, I could do that, but then <laughs> you really couldn't. No. <laughs> no, you really couldn't. I probably could. Because I'm a strong woman. No. I mean, no, I've had Atlas Stones, but, you know, no. we won't I've just it. started <laughs> Succession. I started watching Succession. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Never I've seen heard it before. of it, but I've, I don't know what it is. Always gets talked of in quite high regards. So I was like, give that a go. And it's, I think it's maybe just started the last season. So it's about to end. Is it about successful people? It's about a super rich family who own like most of the media in America mm. and the dad's sort of, the first episode it's like, oh, the dad's on his way out. He has a stroke or something. And then it's like the, the battle amongst the family for who's going to take over the company. And I'm only just oh, a wee bit into yeah. season one, so I don't know where it goes from there, but. Mm. That makes sense with the name yeah. now. Yeah. Can I, can I be, completely honest with you there's a plant at the back of my head it's been there the whole bloody podcast it keeps on jagging me i'm just gonna move it i need to i need to move that what's the, what's the last better. question we always ask one yeah. piece of advice for uh, one oh. one piece yeah. of advice oh, for on, like anyone <laughs> new in the hmm. wedding industry what's it gonna be hmm 
Well, yeah, I think you know what my advice is. It's to get insurance. And if you really are looking at insurance and you're like, I can't, I can't budget for it right now, then at the very least get a professional indemnity policy in place. Because like I said, our claims for professional indemnity, Welsh rare, they do happen. They're very high. You don't want to be in a position where you have to shut your business, sell your house or sell your car or whatever to get yourself out of that situation. So get your PI policy. It'll cost you like less than £20 a month. And then you can start adding onto that as your business grows and you're earning a bit more money, get your contents insured and sorted and all the rest of it. Yeah, this is the most obvious piece of advice. Just get insured, man. Get insured. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and get it with, with Jack. Uh, who's your underwriter, by the way? Beasley. Beasley. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like them. They're very good. Mm. Yeah. And I've, I've seen you on occasion um, have phone calls or whatever in the background. I can't hear what you're saying, but you're always, always fighting for your clients. Oh, yeah. Whatever, whatever their issue is, I just see you very passionately like on the phone to Beasley or trying to sort stuff or... I just always yeah. want the best outcome for my customers, always. Mm. Um, and and I think a lot of brokers, um, you know, if a claim gets rejected or whatever, they might just be like, oh, computer says no, but I always like to try to fight for the best outcome. It doesn't yeah. always happen, but... No. Um, I like to think that I give it a good shot. Indeed. Yeah. So where can people find with Jack? <gasps> Oh, withjack.co.uk is the website. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I th do you know what? I think like I've gotten so bad at keeping social media updated. So just go to the website. Just go to the website. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But follow me on Instagram. I'm Ashley Baxter. Like forward slash Ash Ashley Baxter. Oh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> yes <indeed. laughs> forward slash. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, at... At yeah, Ashley Baxter. You got what I mean. Okay. Ba Baxter. Baxter. Yeah. Uh, Baxter, like the soup? Yeah, the chicken soup. Yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> just, just the chicken just soup. Just the chicken Not soup. Vegetable. No, <laughs> no. Just the chicken. The protein one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, thank you for watching and listening on this very casual uh, spur of the moment episode of the podcast. So just as a quick update. Uh, I might have mentioned this on the podcast earlier. We are going through a rebranding uh, thing with a agency. So, uh, yeah, we're getting stuff changed. And um, so there might be a little bit of a break or we're, we'll just film, the, we'll just fill the break with um, stuff like this. Uh, short, shorter forum videos. Uh, yeah, Greg? Yeah. Yeah. Are we close to finishing? Um, please <laughs> won't be too far off from having the sort of core elements mm. down so after that it'll be just getting some supplemental stuff done here and there by other people yes so our goal our goal and we'll, we'll say this since it's in your ears is to continue the podcast continue our YouTube channel uh, the podcast hopefully doing one every week that is the goal now that we've set up this uh, permanent studio. Uh, that's the goal. And we'll be talking to more and more industry professionals talking about their many years of experience in the wedding industry. So you can learn from us and really grow your business. That's really important to us. Um, along with that, there'll be other shorter form videos from, uh, from Greg and I educating you on specific topics that we want to talk about. We have, we've ha we have already filmed such, uh, videos. And what did we talk about, Greg? You want to fill them in? We have done one video on our packaging that we gift to our couples. So you can hear more about that. Mm. And so far we've done what's in our kit bag. So that will be coming soon. Yeah, not um, that anyone cares about the kit it's bag. A but. Definite learning process trying to do a talking to camera video. It's different beast altogether, but it definitely it's is. fun learning, fun trying to do. Mm. So not just YouTube, but genuinely subscribe so that you can see some of that stuff when it comes out. See mm. more of these, see more of these podcasts when they come out. Yeah, yeah, yes, indeedy. Um, and we've just finished Thrive, 
So uh, we had a, a really good time at Thrive. Yeah. Um, obviously, we attended Glasgow. Sorry, Ashley. No, I'm just stating. All oh, right, sitting <laughs> <laughs> in the camera. Um, you can you can actually go if you need that to go somewhere. Thrive could be its own video as well. <laughs> Should we we make a Thrive its own video? Can be. Okay. Along with the highlights. <laughs> okay. Just slot the highlights into it as well. Uh, yes, I haven't edited the highlights, but there was a lot of footage for sure. So, you know what? Yes, we'll make that its own little video. Um, anyway, yes. And people can find us at cinematefilms.co.uk on Facebook and Instagram and at YouTube at forward slash at perspective by cinemate. And you can hit that subscribe button, hit, hit the wee, uh, the bell as well to make sure you see the videos when they get released. Thank you very much for listening. What? I was going to say it with you. Oh, however. In the meantime, enjoy, enjoy your, your life. life. The goal isn't to live forever. The goal is to create something that will.